Today, we are going over the top 10 abandoned places in California. Keep in mind that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of abandoned places in California. So if you guys want to see another video with more locations, make sure you like for a part two. This list is going to start off easy and it's going to progressively get a little harder and more like more secret spots that not as many people know about. With that being said, the first location on our list is Devil's Gate Dam in Pasadena. Beginning with the first people who inhabited this area of Pasadena, there have been rumors of a spiritual connection to the place. The first inhabitants believe water running through the gorge sounded like laughter, which they thought attributed to the coyote spirit. The dam was named Devil's Gate due to the demon-like face or a horn figure in the natural rock. In the 1940s, a group of oculists became interested in the area and attempted rituals intended to open a portal to hell. The group included rocket scientist Jack Parsons and Ron Hubbard, who was the future founder of Scientology. Their goal was to bring forth a moon child, which they hoped would be an antichrist figure that would lead a Thelemic revolution. In the 1950s, after Parsons died in an accidental explosion, several children went missing in the area around the Devil's Gate Dam. Though none of them were ever found, a serial killer took credit for two of the disappearances. The man, Mac Ray Edwards, was a construction worker at the time and stated that their bodies were hidden somewhere in the concrete of California's freeways. Two other kids who were still missing had no explanation and simply vanished into thin air. Some question if the bodies were hidden somewhere in the dam. Many people believe that the rituals that performed in this tunnel opened up some type of like portal to hell type thing just like is a magnet for that type of stuff you'll always be finding like crazy people there doing crazy things i went there once i'll just say that there was some very interesting people in this tunnel and they kind of freaked me out if you want to check that out i'm gonna put that right here i made a youtube video of that sunken city in san pedro in 1929, a landslide in San Pedro, California, causing several of the neighborhood's wood frame houses to tumble into the ocean. At its peak, the land movement was measured at an astounding 11 inches a day. The land that collapsed connected Pacific Avenue to Paseo del Mar. The landslide took several of the wood frame homes, as well as the street, red car rail tracks, and sidewalks with it. Homes unaffected were relocated to other parts of the town, and wrecked remnants were demolished. Today, the area is called Sunken City by locals. The area has long been a posted no trespassing spot. Trespassers gain a $450 citation. All right, that article was stupid. No one gets in trouble for going there. Maybe that was written like 15 years ago. I was actually just here. It's a pretty dope place. Pretty insane to think that there was like a whole massive neighborhood on the side of this mountain at one point. Also, everyone here is like spray painting and stuff. So if you brought some spray paint, you could definitely have some fun. Angel's Gate World War II bunker in San Pedro. All right, so this is literally right beside the sunken city. For some reason, not as many people know about this. This battery was completed in 1919, one of several which protected the mainland USA from attacks by sea. Its distinguished feature was a series of eight 12-inch mortars, which had a range of 11 miles. The battery was abandoned in the late 1940s and is now a concrete canvas for urban artists. Nearly every inch of this huge structure is covered in ever-changing graffiti. That was a good article, and this is very true. This spot has some pretty insane graffiti. A super dope spot for pictures. The colors are crazy with all the graffiti. You guys do go check out the Sunken City, which was the last one. Make sure you go here as well, because this is right beside it. Fort Ord and Marina. Fort Ord is a former United States Army post on Monterey Bay of the Pacific Ocean coast in California. It was closed in 1994 due to base realignment and closure. Most of the fort's land now makes up the Fort Ord National Monument. While much of the old military buildings and infrastructure remain abandoned, many structures have been torn down or anticipated for development. When Fort Ord was converted to civilian use, space was set aside for the first nature reserve in the United States, created for conversation of an insect, the endangered Smith's blue butterfly. Yo, so I guess if you guys ever go here, you might be seeing some endangered blue butterflies i guess i've never been here but this article does say that they are tearing down buildings this would definitely be a place to check out soon while these buildings still are standing oh you can see right here there's a fire look at that what is this a tank hey maybe they have tanks there i'm, I'm not sure i've never been here it's like right near the water so it's pretty dope california theater in san diego this spanish colonial revival style theater was opened on april 22nd 1927 was seating for over 2,200 patrons. It presented vaudeville and movies until 1937, when it became a first-run movie theater. In 1979, it was used by the Old Globe Theater after its Balboa Park Theater building was damaged by arson. The California Theater was renovated in 1988 and was used as a concert venue, but two years later, it was closed after a concert by the Cowboy Junkies was held on June 
24, 1990. The building was scheduled for demolition. In 2001, plans called for a wide redevelopment of the entire area, which should bring the theater back into the spotlight and out of the shadows. This obviously never happened. In early 2011, plans were progressing to renovate the building. This never ended up going through. Demolition permits were granted in April 2017, and demolition is set for 2021. I was just here a couple months ago. It's not demolished. Who knows if they still plan on demolishing it in 2021. This place looks pretty epic. The colors are insane. This is so old. This is a really good picture. It has the cop right out front. This is exactly what it looked like when I saw recently. There was cops around it. I don't know how much it's being secured or what. Hawthorne Mall in Hawthorne. The Hawthorne Plaza Shopping Center opened in 1977 on a 40 acre lot and included an indoor mall, parking garage, and a few freestanding stores. The mall did quite well for itself until the 1990s as a result of mass job cuts and competition from other shopping centers. By 1998, there were only about 70 stores remaining, with Macy's being the only original to stay open. Finally, in 1999, the mall shut down and has been left to rot. In 2014, ABC News announced that the plaza would be revitalized into an outlet mall, which never happened. So here we are in 2021 with the same abandoned mall. This place is freaking sick. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this place before. This picture right here is crazy. This looks like when it was first abandoned before they gutted it. Sadly, it doesn't look like that anymore. I saw a video of a dude that skateboarded down this thing. He picked up so much speed that he just freaking wiped out of the end. This is a dope spot for pictures, a dope spot for skating. If you go at the right time, there's like these crazy light rays that shine through the roof. Downey Insane Asylum in Downey, California. The LA County Poor Farm, a refugee for the elderly, homeless, mentally ill, and disabled, opened in 1888. Immensely successful, it grew over time to house thousands of patients. Now known as the Hollydale Mental hospital it's dilapidated and definitely creepy a bunch of marines even found a box of mummified legs in a freezer there during a training exercise in 2006 yeah so i was actually just here this place is definitely uh creepy i don't know why there was legs here why why was there mummified legs found here that's freaking weird great look at this picture there's blood all over the walls right here there's a there's a whole theater inside that's pretty sick this place is a big campus and there's like tons of places to explore sometimes there's security sometimes there isn't security it kind of just depends Ends on the day. Marshall Scotty's Playland Park in El Cajon. Marshall Scotty's Playland Park was operational back in the 70s and early 90s. The owner dreamed of turning it into a world class water park and in 1989 invested $500,000 to add a go kart track and install the longest water slide of its kind in Southern California. By the late 90s, the owner unfortunately filed for bankruptcy and the park has sat abandoned ever since. The park is privately owned and is now mostly abandoned and fenced off. Alright, all I'm going to say is that I've been here before. This place is very, very interesting. It has a great history, has a lot of cool things left behind. The main interesting part is because of the crazy lady that lives on the property. When I was there, I don't know if this lady's on drugs or what. She lives in like a camper on the property. She would not stop talking to me about this bully that has been chasing her around. Supposedly the bully was the owner, the owner of the property. She was talking like a bunch of crazy things. I don't honestly understand like really anything she said because it was just like a bunch of nonsense she had a water gun and she said if the bully comes back that she's going to spray him in the face if you guys go be prepared to meet this crazy lady norco powerhouse in norco the Norco Powerhouse was built in 1903 to provide hydroelectric power to various towns in Riverside. Pacific Light and Power took ownership from 1906 until its abandonment in 1914 due to floodwaters damaging the headworks. So basically this place has been abandoned for like over 100 years now. Pretty crazy. I've never been here. I don't know too much about the property. I've seen it on TikTok and YouTube though. I've heard lots of things about it being haunted. Alright, the last spot on our list. East Hills Mall in Bakersfield. East Hills Mall was built in 1973 at the junction of Interstate 64 and US Route 60. The mall itself offered a restaurant and stores for arts and crafts, books, jewelry, records, and shoes. Ames, a victim of corporate debt, began closing locations by the dawn of the 21st century and closed the East Hills location in 2001. Local developer Bob Chowders acquired the mostly empty mall in 2008 and invested $25 million to convert it into the East Hills Professional Center. For some reason, I couldn't even find too much information about this place online. A lot of malls are going out of business, honestly, due to buying stuff online and the easiness of that. But I saved this place for last because the inside of this place is so crazy. As you can see, it's still put together compared to the last mall in our list. This mall is very well kept. You can still make out some of the stores. 
From what I understand, I think there's a movie theater inside. There's just tons of crazy things to see in this mall. I do know that someone just bought it. I don't know what this recent buyer's plans are to do with this mall. They may plan on demolishing it soon. They may plan on renovating it. But anyways, that is all for today's video. If you guys would like to see a part two with more locations, then make sure you like and comment and let me know. Also guys, make sure you check out my vlog channel. It's where I bring you guys through real life experiences. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more. Peace.